that's pretty hard to integrate. Maybe you, maybe it could be done in closed form, maybe not. But we can certainly do it with as an infinite series. So we take cosine x minus one over x. Essentially, the first thing you need to do is take this uh, series here. We take this function here, cosine x minus one over x, and convert it into a Maclaurin series. And here, this is the series for cosine x. So if it's cosine x minus one, then it's going to be basically, so if that's cosine x right here, then cosine x minus one, you're just eliminating this one right here and you still have everything else. So you can write that by simply change, making this go from one to infinity instead of zero to infinity. Okay, so this one right here is when n equals zero that, that you're gonna get the one. When if, if you plug n equals zero into this, if you plug n equal to one, you'll get, no, I'm sorry, if you plug n equal to one, you get zero. No, no, I'm sorry, if you plug n equal to one, you get this term here. And if you plug n equal to two, you get that term. And that's how, that's basically how a series works. So if we go from one to infinity, then that will give us cosine x minus one. So it'll be this right here. Then if we take all that and divide by x, okay, so dividing by x, then we're going to get, leave everything the same, except dividing by x will make it so that it's x to the two n minus one. Okay, so, that, so that's the only thing that changed right there. That's dividing by x. And we can, and two n minus one. So this integral is the indefinite integral of this one. Oops. And it just consists of integrating each of these by term by term. So if you integrate x to the 2n minus 1, you raise this by one power by 1. So 2n minus 1 plus 1 is going to be 2n. And you're going to divide by an extra 2n. So you'll have this 2n factorial still, but you'll also have a 2n. And then you integrate, you get a constant coming out plus a constant. So this is going to be the answer. In particular, I think, uh, and it looks like in Lampasan, you only put in, you only put this part in, right? Yeah. They probably did that because just so that everyone would be forced to go from one to infinity. Um, any questions about that? Okay, let's move on then. Number eight, what, are, what other adventures do we have? Okay, so we have a, we want to approximate a definite integral to within five times 10 to the negative sixth accuracy. So this is the binomial series right here. And in this situation right here, we have one plus x to the fourth, all 
to the K. I mean, I'm sorry, to the one half. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So I want to say that K is one half. You also have an X to the fourth here as opposed to just a K there. So everywhere here, we'll have to put X to the fourth and then we'll have to substitute X to the fourth for X's. So what you what would be good to do with something like this, where you replace this, replace this with, with these. So one plus, and then K is one half. And then instead of X, you put in X to the fourth. Let me do it in red so that you can kind of see so that, that there's a, a trail. And then here it's, so that's that term. This is, this is that term. And then the next term is going to be one half. Okay, then you take one half minus one, you get negative one half. And then, wait a minute, over K. Hmm, okay, I'm really confused now. Okay, I think I wrote it down wrong. I think. Whoa, I think, oh, what is that? That shouldn't be K factor, that should be. Let me look that up really quickly. It's a two factorial. Wow. I can't believe I made that mistake as two factorial there. So that means there's a, whoa, this is very bad. I don't know, this should, this should also have like an X to the N right here. I have to fix that up. Okay, so this is uh, gonna be divided by two. And then you've got X to the fourth, you did in red again. that that's all squared. So that's going to be x to the eighth right there. Okay, and then the next term is going to be this one right here. So that's this term here. So k is one half, so negative one half, but then you'll also have negative three halves. So one half minus two is negative three halves. And then you have three times two, or three factorial. And then on the end, we've got X to the 12th. Okay, so I think that's gonna be enough terms for that one, because what's happening, you're integrating from zero to 0 0.4. If you take 0 0.4 to the 12th, that's gonna be a really small number. That's gonna be very, very, very small. So. And then if you go to the next one, that's gonna be X to the 16th. That's gonna be really teeny tiny. So that's just gonna be irrelevant. I mean, 0.4 is less than a half. And if you take one half to the, to the 16th, that's really bad. And when you integrate this, okay, so we're gonna, when you integrate, then this becomes X. This one becomes X to the fifth over 10, okay? because you raise that by one to, so four becomes a five. And then 
Um, then and then you divide by five. So it's, so if you diff, it, so in other words, if you differentiate this, you get a five coming down, which will reduce this to a two, and that's it, to the fourth. And then this right here is this is x to the eighth. Let's just write it x to the eighth. So when you integrate that one, you're going to get x to the ninth over nine, but you also have a a two, you got like three twos. So nine times eight is what, 72? Something like that. Um, and then you have this term right here. This is x to the 13th. I think that these three is gonna be enough. Okay, and you're evaluating from zero to 0 0.4 when you do that. And so that means if you since you evaluate from zero to 0 0.4, you plug in the 0 0.4 in, you're gonna plug the 0 0.4 in here, and then you just can subtract and plug the zeros in, but when you plug the zeros in, you just get all these zeros. So basically just plug 0.4 in for x. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 to the fifth power divided by 10 minus 0 0.4 to the ninth power divided by 72. Wait, that should be 72. Okay, and let's see what that gives us right there. I think that's gonna be enough. If we calculate this last term, Okay, the last term's already less than, this last term right here is already less than that, just a little bit less than that, than this five to the, in magnitude. It's like uh, 3.6, 3.64 times 10 to the negative six in, in right there. So then, so the next term's gonna be, so the next term's not, this term's not really even gonna be needed because that's gonna be much smaller than this. It's gonna be insignificant compared to this value right there. Okay, so, but that's minus, so let's see, 0 0.4 um, plus 0 0.4 to the fifth power divided by 10 minus the last term. Okay, so I get 0.4010203591. And you only need to the this accuracy. So that means we, what's that, six places? So I just need to do that. So 0 0.40102, that should be, that should, that answer should be okay. Okay, any questions about that one? Okay, let's go on to number nine. Okay, so use series to evaluate this limit. Um, to evaluate limits, what you want to do is just use the first few terms of the of each series. So there's a one minus, okay, so now cosine five X, we're gonna use uh, right here. So you replace the X with, um, you replace these X's with five X's, with five X. And over here. And so that's going to give you one minus, and then replace that x squared with the 5x quantity squared in parentheses, plus, and then replace this x with the 5x. So that's going to be through the fourth over four factorial minus 5x to the sixth over six factorial. Okay. And then just keeps on going. So you get that. In the denominator, that you're going to get one plus five x. Those are right there. Now you're going to sub subtract 
And here again, um, you're going to place these with uh, five X's. These X's, five X's. So just copy these terms down, but replace the X with the five X. Like that. Now, I'm going to cancel some things. So this is one minus one. That's going to cancel that one off. This one is going to cancel that off. And also, check this out. The 5x also cancels that 5x. This is 5x minus 5 when you distribute the 5x in. OK, now I'm going to distribute. I can also, well, actually, you know what? Now that all those are gone, I can just go ahead and cancel these negatives off, because that's negative, that's negative. OK, so now we, we see what we're left with. All those are gone. You have negative uh, 25 x squared over 2. And then you have a bunch of other stuff. But everything else, this is x, x, this we're talking x to the fourth here times a bunch of stuff. I'm just, I'm just going to write all of this, all of this right here. Because the powers keep going up. It's x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, and so on. So I'm just going to say that is x to the fourth times a bunch of stuff. And keep in mind that we're taking a limit as x goes to zero. So something, so all of this is going to go to zero really fast compared to this one. This is going to vanish really fast compared to that one. Okay, now meanwhile, in the denominator, we have. Those are all gone. So this is the first one we start up with. So this is also this is also 25x squared over two. And then we have everything else as x cubed times some stuff. And maybe some other stuff. Doesn't really matter. So all of this is x cubed times stuff. Because that's x cubed. The next term is going to be x to the fourth and so on. So we can um, we can divide the numerator and the denominator by x squared individually, like that. And when that happens, this becomes negative 25 over 2. This becomes 25 over 2. And dividing this by x squared, you get a bunch, you get x squared times some stuff. And over here, you get x times some other stuff. Okay, that's distributing this 1 over x squared in, in the numerator and denominator. And so what's going to happen is this just goes to zero, so does that because of the x. And you're left with negative 25 halves over 25 halves, which is going to be negative one as an answer. Okay, so hope, um, any questions about that one? So you kind of see a pattern here that we're showing that series can be helpful in calculating limits. It's also helpful in calculating integrals, definite integrals and indefinite integrals. So let's see, what else could we do? Um, number 10, use multiplication or division of power series to find the first three non-zero terms in the Maclaurin series for this function. Okay, so we want, so we have x over sine x. Now we know that sine x is this series right here. If you take, if you just take x and divide by this series, then it looks really weird, okay? Then it's like, that, that's really hard to deal with. But what you, what you can do here is, rewrite this as y times sine x equals x. 
And the idea, so basically what we want to do, or what the problem is asking us to do, is find the first three non-zero terms This is of y, okay? So we want x over that. We want to figure out what that is going to be. And, and um, what we should do is just say, we'll just assume, we'll just write it out. So we don't know what it is, but we'll write it out. It's going to look like this. McLaurin series means that it's going to be just x's. like that. And so we plug that into here. And then sine x is this one right here. It's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. We'll write it as a six. And then plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, we'll write that as 120. When you multiply those two together, you have to get x. So now what we're going to do is think of this as a big product, one big product. So it's, it's like one of those nasty, tedious things where you have to multiply everything over here times everything over there, and then you have to simplify it all out. And when you multiply those two together and you combine all the terms, you know, you, you, you figure out all the terms, you're just going to end up with an X, or that's the idea, okay? So you go this, you do this term by term. So first of all, you consider the constant terms. And since there's no, there's no combination that just gives you a constant, then that's, that's um, just like, that's just zero equals zero. And there's, and there's no constant over here, so that's zero, okay? Now, then the next thing is you do the x terms. Now on the right-hand side, you have this x, so that's one, okay? Because that's equal to one times x, basically. So that's zero plus one times x plus zero times x squared. Think of it that way. Zero times x cubed, zero, 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 zero. Zero times any other power of x, except that's one. So that's gonna be one. Now on the left-hand side, to get x, the only combination is C0 times X. So that's going to be C0. OK, great. So that means that C0 is 1. Yeah, OK, so we basically, so when we start to write the term out, and we'll, so we'll do that down here. Then the first term is going to be 1. OK, so that's going to be C0. That's zero, zero, one. Okay, but we have more terms. So don't stop right there. Okay, now let's go for the next one. Now the next thing you want to do is look at the x squared terms. Now, let's see, what gives you x squared? Um, it looks like this times this gives me x squared. So, but, on the other hand, this is zero x squared, so that's zero. So C1, this is just C, it's just C1 times, C1x times x give me C1x squared. So that means C1 has to be zero, okay, boo. And then when you're trying to find the first three non-zero terms, this doesn't count, so that's really sad. I'm really sad about that, oh well. Then you look at the x cubed terms and you can get x cubed by multiplying and let me do a different color here. So you can get x cubed by multiplying c0 with this. Okay, so that's negative c0 over 6. You can also get it by multiplying this with this. 
Okay, those are the only two ways you can get it. So that's plus C2. That's got to be zero. But we know that C0 is one. So that's negative one sixth plus C2 is zero. That means that C2 is one sixth, positive one sixth. And so then that means that's C2. So that means the next term is going to be one sixth x squared. Now, um, the next one. So let's get let's go to the next one. So let's do this in, in this color. Um, x to the fourth. You can get x to the fourth. Okay, if you c zero times that's not going to give it with c zero. Okay, c one. Okay, this and this will give you x to the fourth because okay, so that's negative c one over six. And let's see. Um, this one no. Okay, this one, and this one gives it to you. And then there's no x cubed term over here, so that doesn't work. So that, but we know that c1 is zero, so boo, c3 is zero. Okay, that's really bad. Okay, now let's look at the let's look at the, the x to the fifth term. Now, unfortunately, you can get this a lot of ways. You can get c0 times this one. So that's C0 over 120. That's one way to get it. Let's see, what else, how else can you get x cubed? I mean, x to the fifth, I'm sorry. You, doesn't, this one doesn't work to get it in any way. Um, this one and this one gets it to you. So that's minus C2 over six. And then this and this one gets, wait, no, that doesn't give it to you. Okay, this one and this one gives it to you. And let me, let me backtrack. Okay, this one times this one gives it to you. Wait. Wait, that, this one was um, C2 minus C2 over 6. Okay, and then C4 times uh, C4x times x is C4x to the fifth, so that's C4. And all those have to add up to 0. Okay, so now we know that um, C0 is 1, so that's 1 over 120. And we know that C2 is 1 6. We know that's 1 6. So that's, this can be minus 1 over 36 plus C4 equals zero. And if you, if you solve this for C4, then you get, wait a minute. Okay, so I get seven over three sixty. Yeah, seven over three sixty. So the next term will be plus seven over three sixty x to the fourth. Okay, so those are the three terms. Now instead of writing it like that, those are the first three non-zero terms. So instead of writing it like that, you want to write it like I guess they're demanding that you write it like one comma one sixth x squared comma seven three sixtieths x to the fourth. This is kind of weird. Okay, any any questions about that one? Let's go on to number eleven. Use multiplication or division of power series to find the first three non-zero terms in the McLaren series for this function. Okay, so here you have e to the x times the natural log of one plus e to the x, or one plus x. 
Okay, so e to the x is right here. So you can go ahead and write that out. That's one plus x over one factorial. I'll just write like that. Plus x squared over two factorial. So to do two. X cubed over three factorial. That's six. That's six. And then more terms. Then higher order terms. Okay, then. So that's e to the x. E to the x. And then log of one plus x. That's going to be this over here. So that's x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4, and so on. And then what you want to do now is you want to multiply those out, multiply those together. So multiplying that times that gives you x. That's the only way you can get an x. There's no way to get a constant term. So that's the only way to get an x term. And then let's see, x squared. You can get x squared by multiplying this with this and by multiplying this with this. So let's see, let's do this one. Let's do this one first. So one times. That is negative minus x squared over 2. And then that's plus x squared. Okay, and then the x cubed term. Um, how can you get that one? Well, you can get x cubed by taking this with this. So that's plus x cubed over 3. You can also get it by taking this with this. That's minus x cubed over 2. And then you can also get it, this and this. So that's plus x cubed over 2. OK, that's great. These cancel. And when we write it out, we get x. OK, this is going to be plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over three. Okay, great. And then we'll just have, we'll have more terms, but it only says the first three non-zero. First three non-zero terms. So that's x, x squared over two and x cubed over three. There we go. Okay, great. So you're basically just doing big, maybe advanced FOIL or more tedious FOIL, but infinitely many terms. And you're just looking at for the first few um, low, lowest order terms. Any questions or comments? Okay, let's move on to number 12. Here, what you're trying to do is figure out what series this came from. Find the sum of the series. So it's essentially, you, you look at this and you say, okay, which one of these, which one of these, um, these series is it right here? Or which one is it? Is, can we? Which one of these can we manipulate a little bit to get the series that we have down there? Okay, so that's what it is. So, so on one piece of paper, maybe you should have like these, or if you have two screens on your computer, on one screen maybe you have these functions here. This is wrong. I need to fix this though, by the way. So I have these right here, and then um, on another screen, you do the problem or whatever. You have the, the problem and you try to manipulate it into looking like one of these. Now that particular one looks, you can manip manipulate, this can be manipulated to be like the, the one that we're looking at. Okay, so x to the n over n factor, that's the e to the x. And the way that I see that is, even though it's got that negative one to the n, sometimes the negative one to the n a lot of times will denote cosine or sine, but you'll also need a two n factorial here or a two n plus one factorial there to do that. 
So that's not going to work. Um, but the e to the x. Remember the e to the x, the, the terms are this, x to the n over n factorial. Those are the terms right there. So we can't have, we have to have everything. We have to have everything. We've we, we got this in the n factorial. Everything else has to be put into just one quantity raised to the nth power. And negative eight x to the eight will do that for us. Okay, because x to the eight n is x to the eight raised to the n. A to the n is there, negative one to the n is there. And so since e to the x is this, okay, going from zero to infinity, then going to zero to infinity of this is just going to be e to the negative eight x to the eight. Okay, great. You guys have any questions about that one? Let's go on to number 13. So here's another one, finding the sum of this series. Now here we have a 2n plus 1 factorial, and that is suggesting the, okay, 2n plus 1 factorial. That is suggesting now, where is it? Ah. Oh dear, where is it? Okay, uh, that's suggesting the sine, because the sine has a the sine x has a two n plus one factorial in right there. Okay. So the other one, none of these other ones have two n plus one factorial anymore. So two n plus one factorial. So let's go ahead and. Okay, so for this, the, the series for the sine, I'll go ahead and put that here, down here for reference, or up here for reference. So sine of x is, I'm just copying the formula down, zero to infinity, uh, negative one to the n, x to the two n plus one, over 2n plus 1 quantity factorial. So you look and see, OK, we have the 2n plus 1 factorial, and we have the negative 1 to the n. We have those. Everything. Can, so the question is, can everything else be manipulated into the rest of it? Um, we have this five that's kind of out of place, but the five can just come out in front like that. Here we have pi to the two n plus one. We have two to the two n plus one in the denominator. So that's basically pi halves to the two n plus one. And then we have two n plus one factorial. And then essentially, this is like our x. Pi over 2 is like our x. So this is 5 sine of pi over 2. Okay, so all this is sine of whatever is right here. Okay, because sine of x is this, is x to the 2n plus 1 plus all the, with all this other stuff. So all this other stuff with pi over 2. So the 2 plus 1 is going to be sine of pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's just going to be 5. Well, look at that. A fancy way of writing 5. Have you ever seen a fancier way to write 5? Maybe. Maybe not. OK, so let's see. Number, but, but this is a pretty good, pretty fancy way, I think. I have to admit. OK, so number 14. Find the sum of this series. So you got 5 plus uh, uh, 25 over 2 factorial, uh, 125 over 3 factorial, 625 over 4 factorial. OK, so if you, if you look at 5, 25, 125, 625, what do those have in common? What are the link? 
what's the link between those guys? It's five squared and then five cubed and then five to the Yeah, so let's do this. Let's um we can factor. Let's see here. We can try factoring a five out, but maybe that's not a good idea. Now let's do this. Okay, so it's five plus five squared over two factorial. Now five is just five over one factorial, right? And then we have five cubed over three factorial, and then we have five to the fourth over four factorial. So you notice that um, you're, you're kind of writing it, this is like a one, this is like two, three, four. And we can kind of see how the terms are gonna go there. Okay, so which series does this kind of a thing where you've got a one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, and so on? Well, the answer would be the e to the x series, but the e to the x starts with a one, and then you have x over one factorial plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial, x to the fourth over four factorial, like that. Okay, so if you think of x as being five, then this is five, this x squared is five squared, x cubed is five cubed, x to the fourth is five to the fourth. Um, the only problem is we have this term here, which we don't have a term there. But you can get around that by just doing this, e to the x minus one. If you subtract one from this, then you're going to, then that term goes away. So you just have x over one factorial plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial. So an e to the fifth minus one is gonna be five plus five squared over two factorial plus five cubed over three factorial plus five to the, oops. five to the fourth over four factorial and so on, which is what we have. So the answer would be e to the fifth minus one.